1,001, 1,002. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I was getting a workout on with the Acer Concept D9. Could be a good thing. <laughs> What's going on? Benji Kaiser here, and this is the con Acer Concept, Concept Acer, Acer Concept D9. Great for digital artists slightly on the go. We're going to talk about the specs, how this thing handles in the performance test, and see if this is a good buy for you. Coming at you right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Also, if you're curious about the exact specs or pricing of the Acer Concept D9, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. When this laptop was dropped off at my doorstep, I was truly shocked at its weight. I mean, I am going to be honest, it the blessed thing weighs 9.48 pounds. Um, so yeah, it's heavy, but don't let that scare you away because as I began to work through this laptop, I found that the benefits of this laptop were well worth the weight. I'm going to kick off this video with the build quality and then work my way into usability and spec tests. Like I said, this thing is a tank, but a well-crafted tank. It totes an all aluminum body, 4K screen with built-in Wacom EMR technology and hinges that are so smooth, it made my MacBook Pro self-conscious when I walked into the room with it. So let's talk more about those hinges. The rotating hinge on the Concept D9 is buttery smooth. With zero hinge flex on the main hinge and rotating hinge, Acer has created a work of art for you to create your work of art. To repeat myself, I'm honestly shocked at how solid these hinges are. The only weird thing about the main hinge is that it stops at like a 15 or no, 45 degree angle. Um, but from there, you can actually pop up the rotating screen to lean it back farther. While we're talking about the hinges, let's move into the screen. The hinge and the screen are probably the two most notable items about this device. It comes with an 4K Ultra HD, 100% color accurate at Delta E less than one. And the screen reaches 100% gamut range on Adobe RGB, sRGB plus an 87% gamut range of DCI P3 color accuracy. So the most important color accurate range in my opinion for creators is the Adobe RGB and that you have 100% gamut range of that color profile, you're in good hands. This laptop comes with a Wacom pen with Wacom EMR technology built into the screen. The Wacom EMR system delivers an authentic writing and sketching experience for fast, accurate control with 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. So yeah, this thing is legit. I tested out masking my thumbnails during my everyday workflow and saw a substantial boost in productivity over my normal mouse masking techniques. I have used Wacom tablets a lot in my career, and this is spot on with the precision I have experienced in the past. It normally takes me quite a bit longer to do my thumbnail masking than it did with the Concept D9. The reason being is I'm always having to go up to the control panel and switch the brush size and density. With the EMR and Wacom pen, all that built into the screen, I was able to push harder and softer in order to get a more fine, precise brush stroke when masking or loosen or pull pressure away, should I say, and just get a thicker, more broad stroke in some of those larger areas. So masking with this thing was a dream. Just to be honest, I'm not super impressed with the keyboard or trackpad. I used this laptop for about a week and was still making keystroke mistakes, hitting the arrow key when I wanted to click the left click on the trackpad, and my hand started to get a little sore due to the odd position it put my hand in. Now, I have no doubt that I would probably adjust over time, but it was very odd. I also recognize that this laptop has a very unique design due to the configuration requirements of this laptop. Nonetheless, I found the odd placement of the right shift key frustrating. So having it as a mere key mixed between other keys caused me to miss it a lot. So it's not like a standard shift key that's that bar, it's just one key that's about the same size as all the other keys. And I use the right shift key primarily, I rarely use the left shift key. So for me, it was very weird. 
I like the key press a lot. It was smooth and it has a nice long mechanical click. Uh, this may annoy some people as it is rather loud, but I really like the feeling of it under my fingers. The Switchblade trackpad mechanics are good as well as the touch gestures. Uh, the right click and left click are smooth and easy to confirm a good press. However, the placement, as I mentioned earlier, is less than ideal. All right, so this laptop has a hefty selection of ports, which I personally enjoy. It has one Thunderbolt 3 full USB 3.1 Type-C, one USB Type-C, USB 3.1 supporting DisplayPort over USB Type-C, two USB 3.0 Gen 1s, one featuring power off USB charging, one USB 2.0, one HDMI 2.0, a display port, an ethernet port, a headphone jack, but it did not have an SD card slot. Now, I know this rig isn't necessarily a video editing machine or a photography machine, but it would be nice uh, as artists like to go out and take picture sources a lot and use those as, you know, kind of inspiration to load into their computer. Um, so I think an SD card slot would be a nice feature since there are so many ports already on this computer and it would avoid the need to purchase a dongle. So hopefully in the future, we'll see that from Acer, but for right now, there's no SD card slot. All right, the usability. So honestly, I would consider this a portable workstation. I would not consider this necessarily a laptop by any stretch of the imagination. I have never owned a backpack large enough to fit this laptop. Charger. I'll be right back. Here's my mouse. Let's get over here. There we go. So there's the charger and there's my mouse. Yeah. This thing is massive. So this proves my point that this is a portable workstation. Seriously, this block charger could second as a medieval mace for self-defense purposes. And I want to note that if you're planning on taking this laptop out of the office, you're going to want to bring that charger with you because this laptop will only get about two hours and 45 minutes of battery life, web browsing, and an hour and 30 minutes or so for creative tasks. This thing pulls a ton of power. That's why I consider it a portable workstation, not exactly a laptop for on the go working experience. Weighing in at 9.48 pounds, as I mentioned earlier, having a width of 16.8 inches, a depth of 12 inches, and a height of 1.4 inches. Now that's actually very impressive that this thing is only 1.4 inches in height. Um, this is a rather hefty laptop that honestly deserves a nice home on top of your desk. Now, when you consider the fact that this workstation is only slightly more expensive than the Wacom Cintiq Pro and is capable of video editing, 3D animation, and more, it is a great piece of equipment. As I noted earlier, I spent some time editing a thumbnail for the channel and it definitely boosted my productivity. Now, because I like to access the keyboard for hotkeys, I noticed the screen was a little shaky from time to time without resting on the keyboard deck. This could be avoided by dropping it all the way down, but I like the hotkeys too much. So what I did is I just took my left hand and supported the screen in between using the hotkeys. I will also note that at first, I did not like the thick bezel at the bottom of the screen uh, from a visual standpoint. But as I started to use the pen on the Wacom EMR screen, it lent a substantial place to rest my hand when I needed to access the bottom of the screen uh, with the pen when necessary. So if I had to like, change any settings in Photoshop and near the bottom of the screen, I had somewhere to rest my hand, otherwise I feel like it'd be falling off the screen. Overall, the screen and Wacom experience was excellent and I would give it a nine out of 10. I think the only thing that I would like is if you could find a way to tighten the screen a little bit or even lock it down and into exact position. Uh, that way, you know, when I'm like accessing the hotkeys and the screen's kind of floating, it doesn't move. Um, so that's only really one change I would like to see is just the ability to like tighten or lock down that screen. I think that could be a cool feature. All right, let's jump into the performance. This laptop comes with the i9-9980HK, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080, 32 gigs of RAM at 2,667 megahertz and one terabyte of SSD. Now the GPU is important for this laptop. It is a big 4K screen. So you're pushing a lot of graphics to that screen. So you're gonna see the performance increase in the ability to push so much high quality 4K graphics into that screen. However, when we jump into video editing, you're gonna notice some tests that really surprised me. So hang on for that. 
This laptop performs exceptionally well in the Adobe Design Suite such as Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator. I ran Photoshop benchmark tests from Puget Systems. You can check them out in the description below if you want to run these tests on your own system to see how they compare to the Concept D9. Do note that Photoshop is going to be the most intensive design software. So if your computer can run Photoshop, it can definitely run InDesign and Illustrator, no problem. And the Concept D9 handled all the tasks with ease. One test I run on my own is for photographers and it's opening a hundred raw photo files in camera raw the concept d9 was able to do that in just eight seconds flat which is a pretty solid time i've seen some computers in the past when i've run this test take 15 30 or even 45 seconds to open those 100 photos and if you put that on an exponential scale of 1000 2000 3000 photos you're going to see that take a lot of time and could definitely slow down your workflow now for the video editing tests this laptop was able to render 7,240 frames inside of Premiere Pro at 2 minutes and 49 seconds. It's a great render time, and that's because of our GPU. It can also do 4K full quality playback very smoothly. Again, great job from the GPU. Now, I was surprised by the 4K 9-minute export to 4K full quality YouTube settings, as it did this in 14 minutes and 25 seconds. We're going to talk about why that is in just a minute, but we did see a substantial increase in time from the nine minute 4K clip exported to 1080p. It did that in five minutes and 45 seconds. Now I expected this laptop to perform much better, especially with that i9 9980HK processor, but due to the thermal throttling, which I did not manually override in any of my tests, this laptop had a higher than normal export time, but remained very quiet on all the tasks I performed. During idle, I could barely hear the fans at 35 decibels. And while exporting the 4K clip, the fan noise only reached 46 decibels. So although this laptop did not have a lightning fast export time, it made up for it in stealth. Overall, I think this laptop is a fantastic workstation for artists who are sometimes on the go. This is not exactly an on the go laptop. Like I said, between the battery life, the weight and the size, you're not just going to be running around town with this, going to client meetings, no big deal. This is something that allows you to be mobile, allows you to work around the office, around the house, wherever you might be with this laptop. It has great performance, amazing Wacom technology inside of the screen, and fantastic color accuracy. So if you're looking for a laptop as a digital artist, you're in the right place with the Acer Concept D9. Again, if you're curious about more in-depth specs or pricing, head down into the description below and click that link. If you do use that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, but that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I'm Benji Kaiser. Don't forget to ring that bell so you stay up to date on all the latest videos when you mashed it on that subscribe button. See you in the next episode.